Glory be to God, my dear brothers and sisters. A warm welcome to one and all of you, and I greet you in the name of our loving Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. As always, I'm really feeling honored and uh, grateful to God that he enables such wonderful platforms that we are able to connect together as a family, as one congregation, as one um, body, right? We are members of the same body. We all have various functions, various talents, and various things to do in our life for God and for the world and for your family, yourself, and stuff like that. But at the end of the day, we all work towards that one objective, that is to bring glory to the name of Jesus and the ministries that he had instilled in the life of people like you and me. Um, we definitely don't tend to let go, right? And those people are really called as the children of God. And, and and God himself is the father to those children. right? How many of you pray, uh, whenever you pray, you don't use the word God. I'm not saying it's a crime or it's a, uh, it's, it's inappropriate to use God, uh, God the father you call, and some people call as father God, right? And always, you know, um, then, uh, Jesus prays, he, he prays like Father, or he calls him as Heavenly Father, right? Father in Heaven. So, these are actually the right tenses when you pray to God. You consider him as your Father. You consider him as the one who had begotten you. He had created us in his image, and we are his children, and, and God never denies that. Uh, despite of we being completely unworthy, how many of you know that you are all unworthy? I'm unworthy. You are unworthy to be called as the children of God. Oh, brother, how can you say that? God only created and you are calling us. You are saying that, you know, it's unworthy. Yeah, God created us, but Adam X sin entered to the, through this world through the act of disobedience in Garden of Eden, right? Genesis 3 verses 1 to 20, if you take and read, you will understand that better. The curses were pronounced upon the uh, upon Satan, and uh, curse came on the ground, and curse came on the women, right? And we may bigot in pain and all that. So, all this disastrous thing happened as early as Genesis 3, which means the human era and the fellowship with God the Father actually came to an end as early as two chapters. Can you believe? We are only worthy that much. I want you to be aware. Some Sometimes you feel like bragging who you are. You know, brother, what all achievements um, I have accomplished and, you know, this and that. You don't, I, you, you, God doesn't have to know any of this because he definitely knew that we are dust. Yeah, we are filthy rags. There is no good in the, or goodness in the flesh of men. Bible says this. It's in the Bible. There is no goodness in the flesh of mankind. It's always um, against the will of God. We are all, you know, by birth, we, we were all born as sinners. Adamic sin. That disobedience travels with your permission, with your, or without your permission, with your knowledge or without your knowledge. It's already there. You, you agree to it or not. You disagree to it or not. That's why Bible, you know, talks about overcoming the carnal deeds, the carnality versus spirituality. I have done a short series. It's available in the playlist. What are all the characteristic features of a person who embraces the carnality versus a person who always seeks to overcome carnal deeds and wants to stay on the side of spiritual aspects are being well described in those sessions. Please do not miss. Okay, so always learn to call him God the Father. Why? Because the more you acknowledge that he is still our father despite of we being completely unworthy to be called as his children. That brings a lot of humility in us. That's why I love this beautiful song. Uh, father in heaven. <clears throat> Shall we sing that song before we get into the session? Father in heaven, how I love you. I lift your name in all the earth. May your kingdom be established in our praises. As your people declare your mighty words, blessed be the Lord, 
God Almighty, who was and is and is to come. Blessed be the Lord, God Almighty, who reigns forevermore. Blessed be the Lord, God Almighty, who was and is and is to come. Blessed be the Lord God Almighty, who reigns forevermore. Sorry, I was not best of my voice or my throat was cooperating enough, but it's not about that. It's about the lyrics. It's about the words. Yeah. And it's about the attitude. Attitude is worship. So you may not be best at singing. I'm not best at singing. I know to sing to some extent. That's it. I'm not a great singer. Uh, to some extent, I can sing. But what matters is the tune or tone or doesn't matter. Pitch or uh, modulation doesn't matter. It's okay. Yeah. But worship him with the right attitude. And that's exactly what we are teaching through all these sessions. Warm welcome to this series where we are dealing through this subject, oxymorons, right? And I'm fighting it very hard to finish this series, and therefore we can step into the next one. Um, in fact, I have to continue the next the, the series that's been going on for a very long time: genealogy and evolution of Christianity. Yeah, you know, seventy plus sessions are over, but <laughs> I'm not even done uh, halfway. So let's, but in parallel, we want to enroll a lot of other teachings too. Therefore, we are not stuck with one thing, right? It may be sometimes a little boring to talk about the same thing. So I'm giving you varieties, yet not too many people are listening. <laughs> I'm not pronouncing any curses on you, but I'm just telling you, you are losing something, beloved. You're missing something, and I really want you to take a note of it. And you please listen to the teachings. This is the voice of God that you hear. and I can truly tell you, God coached me enough for 25 plus years. And I can tell you what, I know Bible only 10 percentage. Even after reading the Bible and meditating uh, for 25 plus years, I would say that I'm just done for 10, 5 or 10 percent. I have lots to learn myself, but the Holy Spirit really, really uses um, what he had taught me from the scriptures, John 14, 26. He reminds us from the scriptures on the teachings of Jesus. And he is using us in these last days, tremendous ministries. Um, yeah, very, very few people listen, but that's okay. But that is the time that's coming where, and when Paul was speaking, he was called as a blabberer and uh, he was called as, you know, with all sorts of names, uh, inappropriate names, and people were mocking him, ridiculing him, you short fellow, come here and all that. He was just four and a half foot tall. And, and after he passed away, few years or few decades down the line, he was called a saint. And King Constantine declared him as the saint of the saints. And he was a wonderful minister. And uh, they, they, those copies were preserved. And today, the Christendom does not function without his epistles. There are two people to whom I rush if I need any consultation of anything that I need. <clears throat> any problems, any solution to the problems or answers to the question. I run to two people. I told you this many times. Number one, Jesus. Matthew, Mark, Luke, John. I get most of the things answered there itself, but there are a few things that Jesus could not cover and he left it as a ministry. See, our Jesus is very humble, right? He likes to work in partnership. The second half was fulfilled by his great apostle, Paul, right? And uh, the remaining 14 epistles, including the book of Hebrews, um, I get almost all my answers. Yeah, and the rest of the thing is a bonus, I would say. And don't ignore any book, any word, any letter in the Bible. Please do not ignore even the chronicles, even the genealogy, you have to read because there is something the Holy Spirit is trying to convey. You carefully observe. That is a point that he's trying to make. God does not write anything that is not meaningful or that is absolutely unnecessary. God is someone who values time and efforts, right? And anything it has been compiled in the Bible, these 66 books. And you know what these days people have ignored all the 66 books. Oh, there were a few books which were eliminated from the Bible. They buy a Catholic Bible and they start reading books like Judith and this and that. I also have a Catholic Bible, but I'm not having time to read those ignored uh, the books that were expelled from this gospel. In fact, I'm also tremendously excited to read those books. For example, I read the books of Book of Enoch, Book of 
Thomas, right? And uh, another book, what is that? Book of Jasher, Book of Solomon. I've, I've read those books myself. And those I can do out of interest, but I know, I, you know what, that I did long ago, but nowadays I don't have time. Absolutely. One life is not enough to read this Bible and apply these promises and laws and commandments and instructions to our lives. And it's one life is just, just not enough. It's too massive. Yeah. In my channel, you can see by God's grace, we were able to at least do 800 plus videos are available, includes a little bit of motivational speeches for the youngsters and all that. But most of them are Bible teaching, 90%, right? And 80, 8, 8, almost 850 videos, I would say that covers maybe 5% of Bible, which means I have a long way to go. All right. Oxymorons are the ones who always contradict with the Bible. And they knew not what they're talking, always. Oxymorons are some folks who stood right under the cross when Jesus was hanging there and said that, Oh, Jesus, son of God, are you? Come down and prove it to us now and we will believe. And one of the thieves who were who were who who was hanging there also said the same, Hey, save yourself and save us. And then probably you are well established as son of God, whereas the other guy who was not an oxymoron, who was in a sound mind, who was observing Jesus from a closer distance, right? Yeah, they, they're just separated by 10 feet or something like that. And they were hanging on the cross together for three and a half hours. And Jesus, Jesus gave his spirit up and these guys were still alive and they broke their knees, which means they died a little later than Jesus died. And this, this thief, the other guy was observing him from a closer distance and he learned many things in that interval of three and a half years, or three and a half hours. And then he finally, uh, you know, uh, gets convicted and he says, Jesus, I accept you as my Lord and remember me when your kingdom comes. And he said, today you are going to come with me and I'm going to introduce you to all the saints in the paradise, which means what, you know, some of the saints like Isaiah, Jeremiah and Obadiah, Makkah, all these guys are equal to thief. In other words, the thief became equal to those saints because there is no discrimination or there is no, um, you know, all are the same in, in paradise. In fact, on earth also all are the same. We are all the same under the throne room of grace, Bible says. And therefore, uh, that's a privilege he got. And he was not an oxymoron. Being not an oxymoron, you have a lot of advantage. You have a clear, steady pathway ahead of you. And there is nothing that can separate you from the love of God. And that there is nothing that can separate you from the divine will and plan of God or deviate you from the divine will and plan of God. How many of you are with me so far? Right? And that's the advantage of always staying on the side of the gospel, being the children walking in light and wisdom. Ephesians 5 and James chapter 3 verses 13 to 16 talks about heavenly wisdom versus demonic wisdom. Those that are oxymorons, they are basically filled with the demonic wisdom. Why? Because they always question God. They are rebellions. They are rebels to God. They are adversaries to God, saying that, God, how this is possible? You have such an argument in your prayer room with God? Impossible, God. This is too much for me to handle. What kind of laws and commandments? They are killing me. Bible says in 1 John 5, 3, and none of his laws are burdensome. All of them are perfect and they are for a benefit. Yeah? Blessed are those who abide in the laws and commandments of God. Bible says in Revelation 20 to 14, if Bible says this, yes, simply it means it. It's yes and amen. All the promises of God are yes and amen. And it's up to the mankind to um, agree or disagree. You agree, yes, you're on the side of God. You disagree, fine. It's your choice. You're on the side of the devil. Never assume that having the disagreement in your heart and transgressing the laws of commandment, laws and commandments of God, you would still continue to stay under the wings of Christ and you are to be called as the children of God. No, you... You, your, your, your father is the father of lies. Jesus said this in John 8. He rebuked those children of Israel who fought against him for no reasons. And he condemned them. Yeah. Because it's better to be condemned on earth and come back to your senses, repent, reconcile with God and be transformed in spirit and let there be renewal of mind. Romans 12, 1 and 2 says that far better for you because you get enough time to rectify your errors. And you don't get a second chance after you are gone. 
from this world right that life after death is going to only judge you and no mercy sorry you might hear you might hear a lot of preachers talking hey the white throne judgment don't worry our jesus is going to still continue to intercede sorry is 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 no more going to play the role as intercessor yeah come rome uh, come revelation 19 onwards is going to play the role as ruler is going to come as a warrior in rome, uh, revelation 19 and revelation 20 is going to be the ruler 1000 years of jerusalem and he is going to be the judge seated on his seat judgment seat of christ bible says in second corinthians 5:10 his role is over and you know what when his role changes grace and mercy and favor and all these things going to, are going to be taken away or taken off so where is the room for mercy still some some more preachers will talk uh, yeah he is going to be merciful why because some verses says that god may be merciful towards sodom and gomorrah people of sodom and gomorrah but not towards us yes because they were old covenant people they never had a chance to listen to the teachings of jesus in fact they didn't even get a chance to go through the laws and laws of moses right the old testament commandments and laws itself were not declared to them then how is it you are judging us so quickly so hastily god whereas these people who have got tremendous amount of time and chances on top of that there are new covenant people who got that opportunity to hear what jesus spoke and taught yet they are more sinful than us how is that we are going to be equated to them and god may be merciful to them maybe right or may not be also that's up to him but i'm telling you there are slim chances that even the people of sodom and gomorrah may maybe let go or maybe they would be taken ad- given additional coaching or classes and then god may keep another test or something like that that's up to god right it's not in the bible i'm i'm just telling you but you and i the my point is not that about the people of sodom and gomorrah that's not my point my point is about you and me new covenant people who, those who are living after 2000 years since jesus came and gone and seated on the right side of the father in heaven as our intercessor and holy spirit doing this tremendous job sending his disciples and sending his apostles and preaching and teaching through the epistles and through the books written to us and you would not repent bible says in revelation 20 to 11 those that are filthy let them become more filthy and you know what they missed three words and i'm filling it for filling for god <laughs> because why god is so kind and gentle right those that are filthy let them be more filthy and go to hell that's what it means you deserve to burn in the lake of fire because you embraced deception being an oxymoron questioning god reasoning unnecessarily reasoning is good but then reasoning unnecessarily without any basis you are a transgressor you are a rebellion you try to reason against government of india or government of united states you will be called as a traitor or you will be called as a, a person who rebels against the law and you will be thrown into jail sometimes you will be sentenced to death if it is arabic countries or uh, middle east you know their punishment are going to be even more severe try it out you don't why because oh that cost my life but here on earth you can do whatever you want against god and god is going to be quite is that what you are assuming no it's all written in the book of life and on the day of judgment is going to require an account of all that you commit against the son of god insulting the blood covenant and this holy spirit hebrews 10:29 and john 3:37 or 30 36 no 37 correct okay now we had been going through various categories and i was just setting the preface of what we had been discussing because we will be winding up this series very soon i'm not saying this is my last session but i do not know so i'm just trying to preface no john 3:30 uh, 36 correct this, um, he who believes the son has everlasting life and he who does not believe the son shall not see life but the wrath of god abides in him you will see the wrath of god on the day <laughs> okay we have been dealing through various categories the last two categories alone i will be saying or talking strength and weaknesses we discussed from the life of paul moses saul king saul and uh, samson right the four different parts and then the last session we spoke from freedom through bondage we discussed from roman 622 absolutely from the life of um, you know uh, the believers in christ and and especially taking paul himself as a example role model 
and how it cost for him and all that and we continue on the same lines um, discussing from the word of God uh, let us see how much of time we have uh, and this will be the last category in my notes and uh, we will see um, and th the session is not it over because I have got some more uh, things to cover and uh, yeah my, my notes is not over um, there are a few more sessions I may need that's what I think let's see life through death is what we are going to discuss life through death what is this life and either you are alive or you are dead what is this life and what is this death how can you connect life with death that's all about it you know I, I keep telling you this multiple times Colossians um, chapter 3 and verse 2 I would like to read for you before I enter into the original verse actually I'm going to read from Matthew 16 um, I'm going to read from verses 21 to 28 and uh, yeah sorry 24 to 28 we will do that how many of you are with me right Colossians chapter 3 verse 2 I will just use that as an example to set the context right life through death many people are carried away especially believers in Christ pretty much they are busy in focusing on their life on earth oh I have to do this ministry that ministry I have to do this for God that for God very nice very nice please do great things for God and his people and uh, yeah God God definitely appreciates that right appreciates that and it's a much needed thing for for God for God and for his kingdom so don't refrain from those things but then have a comprehensive understanding as why you are getting enrolled or why are why you enroll yourself into such a program and the program's other meaning would be divine will and plan of God right it's called as the program God has programmed for each, each one of us isn't it he programmed some things into your mind and heart and he blows that spirit right into your nostrils and he says well done my child go to earth and accomplish everything that I have programmed in your mind and heart and you said yes to him and that's how you enter you that's how you entered into the into the womb of your mother and then you are begotten and then uh, when you're a baby angels are deployed to protect you take care of you angels take care of you when you're babies you know as you grow up the knowledge of good and evil comes and accompanies you and that's the exact moment of time where the parental care comes into play that's why parents listening to me you are going to play the role of angels as your child becomes a toddler or something like that right after a year or so start talking from the word of God to the children please keep them away from gadgets and this and that right well I give my mobile phone then I'm free of all no nuisance and all that really you are playing the role of an angel you're you're an angel of, of God to your child and it's your prime responsibility those that are begetting more than two children three children don't go for it if you cannot preach or teach them Bible please stay with one nothing wrong in in having just one child and the child doesn't have a sibling it's okay you be their sibling you take good care of the good care of their character attitude soul yes you have enough time then please we get more child more children but the point here is not about the numbers the point here is about the parental care why am I talking about parental care because you're playing the role of an angel why have you why are you supposed to play the role of an angel because you are going to teach them about this life on earth <clears throat> and there is a second life after they leave this earth you got to inject and instill that from childhood yeah from the life of Moses I was discussing in lesson number six I think his mother yeah that, that little baby was sent back to Moses M Moses mother and Miriam played the trick uh, very nice right she she got back the baby her own brother to her mother and presented and six or seven years right she was nursing him and taking care of the child and all that when he has grown as a little boy he was returned to palace and it was kept that way that it was some other Hebrews child and not her own child and that, that 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 mother taught the little Moses everything possibly from the scriptures parental care very good example an exemplary role model for all the parents is Moses mother yeah I really respect her a lot yeah and those teachings really got grounded and rooted in the minds of this 
tender uh, Moses, little Moses, and then you see what all great things he was able to do for God. Of course, he was too strong for God to be used because he started to focus things. Uh, no, he started to take too much on himself rather than depending on God. And God had to do that little, little bit of repair work in his mind. And it took God 40 years. 40 years, brother, 1,000 years equal to 24 hours for God. That is one day. Therefore, 40 years means it's like few minutes. So don't worry. God took few minutes to work on Moses, that's why don't ever equate the work of God against your age or something like that. It's been two years, brother, since I've been sick. Not two years. It's it's few minutes according to God's standards. Now, sometimes it's few seconds, right? Thousand years equal to 24 hours you calculate, right? That means one day equal to how many hours in the in the in the sight of God? Uh, not hours, right? It's going it's going to come in some seconds or minutes. Okay. Now you're all with me or not so far? Why I am turning my Bible to Colossians 3 to is to talk to you about this on this concept life through death. Life through death. Before I get into the life through death, I want to talk about this death on earth. And after that, what happens is what is 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 what is is what had been very well described in the book of Revelation, chapter 20, verses 11 onwards, the white throne judgment. Everyone that are great or small, big or uh, sorry, great, uh, big or small and great, great or uh, sorry, great or least, they have to stand before God and uh, they will all be judged and by the same book, the standards, the book of life. This book, what you have are the ones which has the protocol, which has the standards, which has the rules and regulations and laws and commandments. God is going to pretty much judge us from this book. And why people are really, really complicating Oh, I'm very scared when I think of white throne judgment. No, you should be excited because definitely you know the result. See, when you're when you have done your exams very well, you see the children walking out of the hall very confidently, but few children walking in a in a kind of a dull face. Why? Because they are very confident that they are going to fail. <laughs> but the results are not hidden from them, right? More or less they know because there were 10 questions, and you just you just know that what you have read had come and you have answered it very well. The way how you present is totally a different thing, right? Some some kids are very sharp and they present it very well. Some kids are a little above average, and but they're confident of scoring good marks according to their expectation. But some children have not been able to answer. Why? Because they did not study properly or basically they didn't understand the question. That's exactly what I'm trying to pinpoint here. You did not understand the doctrines of the Bible but you had been spending, but this, the, the children who walks out with a dull face also spent efforts the whole night studying. It's not that they did not study, but they were not able to answer why, because they didn't have that understanding. And after coming out of that examination hall, auditorium, they discuss and they say, I know this answer, I know this question, but I was thinking it was asking, you know, the mathematics paper, Especially, it's very tricky, right? The, uh, the 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 question, if it is framed in a different way, you will end up not answering. If it is asked in a subtle way that you are used to it, you answer it very well. That's called as you know the the tricky part, and that's why MCQs are very tough rather than descriptive answers, multiple choice questions, right? It's very confusing, very tough to clear the examination, very tough. But then you the the, the, the kid knows the answer, but there wasn't anyone to explain the question. You understand the question. You understand the problems that you face through in your life. You understand the struggles, the hardship, the troublesome people that you face who cross your path and the troubles that you come across and some of the moments that are not pleasing to you and you didn't expect. If you definitely know from where it arises, who permitted it, did God permit it or yeah, of course, everything is in God's control. But you know what? After a period of time, you continue to be a rebel against God. God walks away from your life, which means you are completely, uh, in other words, you're taken, you're taken captive by the demons, right? You, your father is the father of lies. Father in heaven is no more your father. Absolutely. I can prove it to you from the Bible in many, many people's life. Yeah. God walked out of Samson's life. And who was controlling him? Demons. But he came back to realization and then God accepted his prayers. That's a different thing. right? Likewise, in the book of Chronicles, book of Kings, if you see, God walks off 
out of israel's um, territory or life right and the and he sends um, uh, and he surrenders them in the hands of the enemies and the enemies comes and they come and torture them and this and that and then they cry out to god and god comes again and then again they rep repent and they again they sin and god walks off and he surrenders them in the uh, hands of the devil god of course god is in control god the father is in control over everything he's omniscient omnipotent omni present and nobody can stand against god it's ultimately god's decision and god's choice but who is enforcing him to make such decisions it's we and our attitude and our acts against god and ultimately the reason why because these things people do against god or commit a sin or a crime against god consistently for years and decades is because they are oxymorons yeah they are blindfolded they have not focused enough on the problems they have not stood back and introspected reasoned it right they are always stuck to one method one pattern right if the question is asked exactly in the same way how you have practiced your dumps then you are scoring 100 out of 100 right but if they twist the question in a different form or a different format or method you will get 0 out of 100 because you don't understand the question asking being asked in a different way yeah a child has been taught you're going to be asked in the interview what is your name and you're going to tell um, my name is whatever and the second method they taught us could you please tell your father's name and the child is going to tell father's name so they kept on rehearsing and the principal in the interview asks the child instead of what is your name he asked him could you please tell me your name and the child tells the father's name why because that's how the child was taught the pattern right could you please tell me your <clears throat> father's name was the second question and the second question became the first you know this is the first question is remaining as the first question but the pattern second question's pattern became the first question's pattern could you please tell means immediately it connects it with oh that could you please means father's name immediately it tells father's name as its own name because it's a child <clears throat> whatever it's been taught to the child it exactly does in the same way similarly our bible is not only the bible for the children but bible for the middle aged the adults the elders everyone and it gives you comprehensive understanding bible is the book of life comprehensive understanding while you live your life on earth why because that life after death is the more uh, is the most critical thing that all of us will have to consider all of us will have to be reminded why because you're going to live in eternity with god for i don't know how many years but at least for a trillion years okay it's too much huh? a billion years no you, not even a billion year okay what is the age of the earth age of the earth is 3.54 billion years so can we say that much no that is acceptable right reasonable i'm giving a reasonable number here so let's say you are going to live in eternity with god 3.54 billion years what is this age that you live on earth 70 years 80 years 100 years fine that is not even point not 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 one percentage of 3.54 billion years so why are you so focused on things that are things that are of the earth versus the things that are of the eternity which are yet to take place where you should be focused more tell me beloved i'm not saying you should live free of um, planning and strategy you got to plan you got to strategize you got to have you got to be a visionary right that's how you can lead your families and you can earn and for your living and you can work hard and yeah you can bless other people that are downtrodden poor and needy and all that it's nice to plan always without planning you are going to be a failure no without a uh, doubt i can say that colossians 3 2 i would like to read set your mind on things above and not on things on the earth for you died and your life is hidden with christ in god colossians 2 3 important i will start with that perhaps i won't have time to uh, step into the original uh, reading because my my time is almost up i have only five more minutes yeah you understand these are all very detailed concepts i cannot cover in short span of time and oxymorons especially listen to me you never focus on things that are above things that are in eternity you are so silly you are so crazy that you keep your mind occupied 
your heart's occupied your thought process occupied on those little things the tiny things which bothers you so much yeah you know what that sister told me yeah what she told you will say some nonsense okay when did she tell you 20 years ago brother but i have not forgotten that you know <laughs> really and you call yourself as a believer in christ born again all things have passed away passed away and i'm a new creation and all the second corinthians 5:17 you know the verse also correct no and you when did you take water baptism 30 years ago brother which means 30 years ago you took water baptism and whatever the sister or brother spoke against you 10 years later you are able to remember that means what you are you are not born again all 30 years you were living in demonic wisdom just giving one example oxymoron's character you want to know more about oxymoron's character oxymorons are none other than people who are engaged or soaked in passive sins what is this passive sin active sin passive sin i am not teaching grammar active sins it's it's men who discriminated it's not god who discriminated god equates a murderer to a gossiper second corinth timothy chapter 3 verses 1 to 9 colossians 3 5 to 9 1 timothy chapter 1 verses 9 to 10 and 1 corinthians chapter uh, 6 9 and 10 and mark 7 21 to 23 galatians 5 17 to 21 romans chapter 1 verses 29 to 32 read all of these and judge and justify who you are and when you justify there are 50 to 60 categories of sins and sinful deeds which includes both active and passive sin because it is men who discriminated example i can be a gossiper but i should not be a murderer brother blood shedding is a sin really hurting people is also sin you want to know more about the demonic wisdom taken read james 3 verses 13 to 18 you will know more of it backbiting untamable tongue james chapter 3 verses 1 to 12 you take and read untamable tongue i ended up speaking for 47 hours five episodes it is in the playlist just because the words that proceeds out of your mouth every useless word every idle word every hurtful word that really hurts somebody yeah i'm talking about backbiters who are so dogmatic in their conversation and diplomats and political and um, tricky and misleading people and deceiving people and um, what is that so many things you do with the help of your tongue isn't it the thoughts of your mind and heart they proceed in the form of words and you have to give an account of every idle word matthew 1236 says that why are you involved in all of these because you are an oxymoron why are you called as an oxymoron because of colossians 3 2 and 3 you always set your mind on things that are of the earth that are on the earth of the earth and on the earth right of the earth what proceeds of the earth worldly pressure pleasures worldly people worldly pressures sometimes you are in pressure to perform more than your colleague and you take shortcuts hmm? you spread tantrums and heresies about your colleague and people believe <clears throat> what you had spread as gossip are you a child of god bunch of unclean spirits are ruling in you and you are a demon please never acknowledge that therefore you have a second chance here on earth to rectify that problem oxymorons you are the you are worshiping the father of lies you are devil's child not god's child sorry because why you are supposed to focus on things of on things above what is this things above that means i need to sell my property and become a pauper who is saying that god is not stupid enough to write such things it is men who twist god's word and they make some stupid ideologies and stupid principles and stupid norms and regulations many churches follow this you cannot have your own property you cannot have your own car who said that you definitely should have your own land piece of land and live in your own property but don't set your heart towards those properties the people have so many houses and cars and all that don't set your heart towards those materialistic things because when you're dead 6 by 4 by 10 10 feet deep 4 feet width and 6 feet length you're going to be buried many people did not even get that privilege during pandemic they were burnt to ashes and only they buried the ashes couple of my own relatives they never got the privilege that much only is the life on earth unpredictable tonight you do not know your spirit is going to be taken off then how are you going to stand before god and justify who you are if that was the case many many popular celebrities they lost their lives in pandemic 
Many, many rich people were diagnosed of dreadful diseases which their money could not solve. Steve Jobs, one good example, the founder of Apple, multiple trillionaire. That fellow doesn't even know how much money he has. He died at a very young age, at the age of 51 or 52, very young age. Diagnosed of cancer and nobody could save him. Died, dead and gone. What are you focusing, right? On the life after death. Yeah, I, I've not yet gone into my subject, beloved. I'm still talking about this life after death before I get through the subject life through death. Life through death. You have life when you're dead on certain things. And that's exactly what I'm setting as context, right? While you live your life on earth, you got to be dead on certain materialistic things, certain worldly things, certain worldly um, you know, you're a worldly pleaser, right? You always please people. No, brother. Um, you know, they twist the word of God, right? You got to be a peacemaker. Pursue peace with men. Hebrews 12, 14. They will pick only the first half. And Paul said that very clearly. You know, to possible extent have pe be peacemakers because you cannot uh, be always at peace. Sometimes you have to disagree. Paul and Barnabas, they disagreed. They took both the different routes and at some point of time, they agreed. That's why they, Paul called Mark again. Come. Join my ministries, I realize my mistake. You have to disagree, but you don't count them as your enemy. Bible says in 2 Thessalonians chapter 3, verses 14 to 15. Do not count them as your adversary. Admonish them and leave it, leave it there. Leave them alone sometimes. I'm just giving you examples, right? How people are being dead in their spiritual life. Your compromises of your spiritual quality and standards. What to do, brother? You know, we cannot have enmity. You don't have to have enmity, but don't have friendship, association with the worldly people or worldly pleasers. Or you yourself don't be a worldly pleaser. Why? Because this is like a passing cloud and you cannot, you cannot afford to waste your time here on earth. For you died and your life is hidden with Christ in God. What is that? For you died. It, was talk it is talking about the past. It's connecting to 2 Corinthians 5, 7, Acts chapter 2, verse 38. A remission of sins through in the name of Jesus through water baptism and on that day you're dead to the sins of the past all things have passed away I'm a born again believer in Christ I'm newly born again I'm a new creation in Christ all things have passed away is what it means exactly yeah? that's what Paul reminds here um, from the from the verse my time is up actually for you died and your life is hidden with Christ in God you died long ago and why are you you're, you're, you're dead to the flesh. You're dead to the carnal deeds. You're dead to the, um, the the worldly pleasures and worldly desires and this and that. Why? Because your focus is now on something else. Your destiny is on something else. But in the process of walking towards the destiny, you are neither a compromiser on your spiritual deeds versus your materialistic deeds. Materialistic deeds are important too. You've got to earn money. You need money for everything. But you are not the worshipper of money. In the process of earning that money, you will never be a compromiser, lowering your spiritual standards. And if you are not falling according to this principle or you are not walking in this principle, you are clearly an oxymoron, right? You are clearly an oxymoron. That, um, you, you definitely will not be able to justify as why you compromised on your spiritual standards. You may say this or that, but since you started to walk as compromiser, you have stopped focusing on the things that are above. You have always stuck to the things that are of earth. And earth, the things are of like a passing cloud. It just passes off. Your life passes off. Right? And that's called as, we are talking through the subject, life through death. And I'm not yet done. This is getting very interesting, isn't it? A lot of facts are being unearthed. I hope this is useful to you. God bless you. Heavenly Father, we want to thank you for this wonderful time, opportunity. We appreciate your mercies. We appreciate your grace, O oh Lord. There isn't anything greater than this time where you are teaching us so personally from the word of God. And every word that proceeds from your mouth is a blessing to us. We respect your presence. We thank you. In Jesus' name we pray. God bless you. Subscribe to our channel. Get access to all the playlists. Share it with your friends, relatives, near ones, dear ones. And continue to remember me and our ministries in your personal prayers. I'll meet you soon. We have next session when we meet, part two. We are going to talk, continue to talk on the subject, life through death. God bless you.